Hey guys, it's Sebastian, and today we are going to talk about award charts, why they matter, and also my thoughts around all of this. The big reason we're talking about this is because American Airlines is going to follow in United's footsteps, along with Delta's footsteps, in terms of getting rid of their award charts and moving more towards dynamic pricing. I think a lot of people are kind of confused what I mean by this, especially people who are new to the game who don't know all the slang and all the jargon that we're throwing out there. Before I continue though, we are still traveling, so if you look outside, you can tell that it's pretty gloomy. I don't really control the lights. I'm not going to bring studio lights because that's absurd and I don't have room for that. So if we turn around, we can see that pretty gloomy, but it is what it is until WeWork decides to have a studio space aspect as well. Starting off with the basics, what are award charts? Award charts are, as it sounds like, a chart that tells you how many points you need to spend to redeem for an award from location one to location two. There might be different zone rules, there might be different location rules. It just really depends on the specific program. For this video, I'm not going to dive into a specific program because I think it's going to get a bit too confusing. We're not really talking specifically about the American Airlines changes, but just how changes like this in general will affect you or maybe not affect you. On the flip side, we have dynamic pricing, which means that the price for the redemption changes based off various factors. Before we delve into the pros and cons of this though, let me know down below what your thoughts are on all of this. So are you someone who prefers that award chart or do you prefer dynamic pricing or are you just not sure and you are here to learn about it? Also, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. So the big pros of the award chart is that you know how many points it's going to cost to get from location one to location two. Whether it's Thanksgiving and everyone's trying to travel, maybe it's Christmas and a lot of people are going on vacation, or whether it's off season, it's going to cost the same exact amount. The big benefit is that during busy times, you're getting more value, but during less busy times, you can just use cash. You don't have to use those points if you're not getting value from them. One of the other big benefits of award charts is that oftentimes, if you wanted to do business class, you're going to spend twice the amount of points, depending on the program, in order to redeem for it. So let's say it's 40,000 points for economy, one way from A to B, it might be 70,000 or 80,000 points for business class, and then maybe 100,000 points for first class. The reason this ends up being very powerful is because you're spending twice the amount of points for business class, or 2.5 the amount of points for first class, but if you had to pay that out of your pocket, you're probably spending five to 10X, so a $500 ticket for business class is probably $2,500 to $5,000. In short, points allow people, especially people who are willing and able to pay for economy tickets anyways, to redeem for these business class flights that they otherwise wouldn't pay for. So for me, I'm not in a position where I can't pay the $300 or $500 or $700 for round trip economy flights to pretty much anywhere in the world. But for first class, I'm still not in that position where I'm comfortable dropping five grand or seven grand. I might drop one to $2,000 if it's an interesting flight, and I have done that before, but three, five, six, that doesn't make sense to me. The very big disadvantage for award charts is that for people who like to travel and look for deals and who don't care about business class or traveling during busy times, maybe they have a very flexible schedule, maybe you're a student, then it doesn't really help you because you can probably find a better deal from Scott's Cheap Flights, from a lot of other places, so why would you want to be stuck with these points when you don't want to deal with the masses anyways and you don't care about business class? For this group of people, this is where dynamic pricing comes into play and why it might be interesting for you. With dynamic pricing, you typically get a certain set value for those points. This means that if you're traveling during cheaper times, it's better for you. Pretty good models of this are going to be Southwest as well as Delta. So with a Delta card, you are getting at least 1.2 cents per point for your Delta points. This means that if the price of Delta tickets drop, better for you. If the prices increase, you have to spend more points, so worse for you. With business class and aspirational stuff, the point cost tends to be very high for dynamic pricing, given that it's based off that ticket price, that dollar amount that you need to spend, instead of just being double the economy rates. I would argue that for students, for people who don't care, who are just looking for deals, dynamic pricing is probably good for you because you're out deal seeking anyways, and you don't care about all those other things. For this segment, they are probably gaining a lot of value from Delta points, 
they're also getting value from United moving towards dynamic pricing and same with American Airlines because it makes their points more valuable for what they care about. In the award community, a lot of people like to joke that Delta points are sky pesos and the main reason is because they're very bad for award redemptions. But for normal people who don't care about that type of stuff, there's still a bunch of Delta flash sales where you can get to Europe for 35,000 points. I think we've seen Australia for about 50,000 points and Asia for about 40 to 50,000 points as well. If you're someone who just wants to do that trip, instead of burning your physical money and you found that Scott's Chief flight steal, you're just looking for these Delta flash sales. Looking at the landscape, we see this change among the US airlines, but not really the international ones. So moving forwards might be a good thing, bad thing, depending on where you fall on the fence. If you care about the business class stuff, I would probably use your United points as well as American Airlines points sooner rather than later. But even if you don't use them, even if you just have them, eventually we'll probably see some business class deals because they're going to have inventory that they can't sell. They realize that, hey, this, this doesn't really help. We still have liabilities on our sheets because points are liabilities. We've seen this with Delta where they have these Delta One Suite deals, not as frequent as the economy stuff, but it still does happen. If anything, this means that your Chase United as well as City Points are more valuable because they transfer directly to a lot of these other partners that you can book with. So instead of going through United or AA, you can just transfer directly to CAFE. It might not make sense, so you still have to run the numbers for that and find the right partner for what you're looking to redeem for, but that's kind of a whole another rabbit hole. And in the future, I'm probably going to start diving into these topics a bit more. I've been doing a lot of intro topics, and whenever I talk even about the intermediate topics, a lot of confusion, hence why we're doing this video and explaining the pros and cons for you to understand it a bit more. Not sure if it makes sense to put a level at the beginning of each video to tell you how difficult or the experience you need for it, but something that I just thought of because just a lot of general questions in these type of videos. Again, the point of this channel is to help people make educated, data-driven decisions and make them more efficiently. Wrapping up the video, if you do want to see some travel stuff, go on Sebi Fung, subscribe to that channel. You'll start to see more stuff soon. Going through the Bor Bor backlog finally, so hopefully that's interesting. Uh, I realize I shot a lot of stuff, so just hard to get through it. Hopefully that helps clear up the pros and cons and my thought process around all of this. If you have any questions about the topic that we just talked about, then leave them down in the comments below and I'll try to get to them or other people in the community will get to them. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out. If you know anyone else who'd benefit from what we just talked about, feel free to share the video with them because it's probably going to help them out. But otherwise, I hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.